Hi, I'm Drew Chavon, your Energy Specialist with the University of Maryland Extension. This video is part of our Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. In a previous video, we explored how to use a multimeter to measure continuity, uh, the open circuit voltage, and the short circuit current of a solar module. Uh, in this video, we'll build on that knowledge to explore some quick and easy methods to determine if your solar module is working properly. Uh, the use of a multimeter like this one can help to ensure the safety of your system as well as to troubleshoot any issues that you might encounter in working with uh, your electrical system. So to do this, we'll evaluate voltage, current, and resistance across the diodes of a solar module like this. And we'll also learn how to replace the diode on a solar module if it's found to be defective. Shaded photovoltaic cells consume electricity instead of producing electricity, resulting in a low voltage in the shaded region. Electrical currents will be forced through these shaded cells since current always flows from high voltage to low voltage, causing the shaded regions of the solar module to heat up and experience power loss. Thus, partial shading of a solar module will cause reverse voltage across the module or modules with the current flowing through the shaded region while generating additional heat. So for this reason, Schottky bypass diodes are typically installed in a junction box that's found on the back of most solar modules. A diode restricts the electrical current so that it flows in only one direction. The operation of a diode is analogous to how a check valve operates in a pipeline, and that's to protect a pump by restricting the backflow of water. So likewise, a bypass diode is typically used in the solar module to reduce the power loss that the solar module experiences due to shading. So bypass diodes provide a low resistance path for the current to flow around any series of the solar cells that may be shaded. These diodes are actually wired in parallel with the cells that are in the module. Because electricity takes the path of least resistance, it's easier for the current to go through the diode than it is to go through the shaded cells. This minimizes the heat gain and also reduces the current loss that you experience in the module by providing proper circuit protection within the specified system voltage. While most solar modules are equipped with factory installed bypass diodes within their junction box, an additional diode may need to be integrated into your system if, for instance, you have consistent shading on one or more of your solar modules that are wired in series. So in that case, wiring a bypass diode in parallel across an entire shaded module would prevent the current from being forced back through that shaded module, effectively preventing any heat gain and power loss within the module. So with that example, the diode that's wired in parallel with the whole module would act the same as an internal bypass diode only in that case it would bypass the entire shaded module instead of just individual cells within the module. Now in this video we'll test the internal bypass diodes that are found in the junction box on the back of, in this case, a 100 watt solar module uh, in order to ensure that the diodes are functioning properly. Now it's important to remember that solar modules will be live when they're exposed to sunlight with the potential to cause injury from sparking. So knowing the level of the voltage that you're working with will help you take appropriate safety precautions like turning off the power or covering up the solar module or disconnecting the module uh, before you begin any electrical work. Now, before we start, we'll take a look at the ratings for the solar module under standard test conditions, or STC, by looking at the specification label that's on the back of the module. The standard test conditions, or STC, under which most solar modules are rated are 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 25 degrees Celsius, 1,000 watts per square meter of irradiance or sunlight, and an air mass of 1.5. Under those particular testing conditions, which is the STC, the module should read an open circuit voltage of 21.2 volts and a short circuit current of 6.1 amps. Now, we can expect similar voltages today since our current temperature is somewhere around 78 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really close to the standard test conditions of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Once again, the standard test conditions uh, specify the temperature under which the modules have actually been rated. While you might expect a slightly lower voltage at higher temperatures, a significant reduction, say on the order of 40 to 50 percent, for instance, uh, that could indicate a problem with the solar module, such as a blown diode within the junction box. To start, we'll open the cover of the junction box that's located on the back side of the solar module by carefully prying open the locking tabs on the cover with a small slotted screwdriver. Now that we have the junction box open, we should be able to see the bypass diode or diodes that are held inside. 
While some solar modules will have only a single diode inside of its junction box, like this 50 watt solar module, others may have two or more bypass diodes like this 100 watt solar module. Again, these bypass diodes will provide a path of least resistance for current to flow in the case that some of the cells within the module have lower voltage from shading. For our first measurement, we'll take the open circuit voltage of the solar module. We'll start by selecting the DC voltage setting on the multimeter, connecting the negative lead to the negative side of the diode and the positive lead to the positive side of the diode. In this case, we're reading about 21.6 volts, which is rather close to 21.2 volts that's reported under standard test conditions. And this is close because the temperature today is very close to the standard test conditions of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We can obtain a reading that's closer to the open circuit voltage at standard test conditions by lowering the tilt angle of the solar module until it's perpendicular to the sunlight. While the voltage that we measured is sufficient for the solar module, it only represents half of the picture. To measure current, we'll switch the positive probe to the DC current port on the multimeter and then select the DC current setting. We'll now connect the leads to the solar module while it is completely covered and then we'll measure across the leads when the module is producing electrical energy once again under sunlight. Now that current is flowing through the system, we obtain a reading of 5.17 amps with the solar module in the vertical position. This is a little lower than the short circuit current, or ISC, of 6.1 amps, as reported on the back of the solar module. Our current reading becomes much closer to the documented short circuit current, or ISC, when we adjust the angle of the solar module to be perpendicular to the sunlight. In this case, we're rather close to the short circuit current of 6.1 amps, which has been evaluated under standard test conditions. So once again, in this case, the 100 watt solar module that we have here appears to be in good working order. For the next evaluation, we've removed the solar module from any light source, including any reflective lighting that we might have in the workshop, which could cause false readings. Now we'll select the diode setting on the multimeter, which is typically denoted by a small arrow with a line through it, indicating the anode and the cathode. Then, with the solar module completely covered, we'll connect the leads across the diode or diodes you may get an overload or OL reading on your multimeter if you connect the negative lead to the negative side of the diode and the positive lead to the positive side of the diode. In that case, the OL would just indicate that no current is being allowed to flow. That reading would be expected since the current would only be allowed to flow in one direction. So the OL reading in that case would indicate that the bypass diode is functioning as intended. However, when we switch the positive and negative leads around, with the positive lead now on the negative side of the diode and the negative lead now on the positive side of the diode, then we obtain a reading of about 0.28 volts, which indicates that the diodes are allowing about a 0.28 voltage drop across them. So again, this allows the current to bypass the cells in the module so you don't lose the output for the whole module. Now to check an individual diode, we'll put the positive probe on the anode of one of the diodes and the negative probe on the cathode side of that same diode. For reference, the cathode is the side with the bar around it. In this case, we're reading 0.14 volts across the single diode, which is opening the check valve and allowing the current to go through. Now once again, when we read across the whole system, measuring across both diodes, we read 0.28 volts, which tells us that these diodes are fully operational. But if on the other hand you were to measure an overload, OL, or a low voltage in both directions, then you would know that it's open, broken, or electrically shorted. If your multimeter is not equipped with a diode setting, then you could also use the resistance or the ohm setting. In this case, we're reading close to 9.5 mega ohms in one direction while the other direction is open. If you determine that a diode must be replaced, you'll first remove the old diode by either unscrewing the connection terminal, like the ones seen in this junction box, or by using a soldering iron to disconnect the leads of the diode. We'll continue by clearing any excess solder from the holes in the junction box terminals. New diodes should meet the voltage and current requirements of your solar module. To select a replacement diode, it may help to check the model number that's printed on the old diode. You may need to bend the leads on the replacement diode to match the terminals within your junction box using a pair of pliers or by hand. 
Now install the new diode by inserting the leads into the terminal holes with the cathode or the band side of the diode oriented in that same direction as the original diode, which should be on the same side of the box as the positive cable gland. The intersection of the diode lead and the terminal should then be soldered securely. The junction box cover can now be securely closed by applying pressure to the locking tabs. Well, I'm Drew Chavon with the University of Maryland Extension, and I hope this video has provided you with some understanding of how bypass diodes work within solar modules and how to replace the diodes if needed. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of the Solar Clips video series. But in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar, photovoltaics, and other energy-related topics.